A very good evening and welcome to Rwanda Television News in English. We'll begin with the headlines. Rwanda is beginning to benefit from the substantial investment put in the health sector and reports say that over 5,000 people from other countries come to Rwanda for medical treatment every year. Economic analysts suggest that the Rwandan government should adopt new measures to tackle inflation, such as increasing strategic reserves for frequently fluctuating commodities. On the international scene, conservation experts in Kenya are helping communities in areas impacted by drought to develop climate-resilient alternatives, livelihoods like beekeeping. My name is Olive Neten. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. Let's start the news in details. We'll start by this communique from the office of the Prime Minister, and it says that pursuant to the law number 14, 2013 of 25, uh, 03, 2013, determining the organization and functioning of the province, especially in its Article 9, Today, the 23rd November 2024, His Excellency the President of the Republic has appointed Mr. Jean Bosco Niwitura, Governor of the Western Province, Dan at Kigali, 23rd November 2024, on behalf of His Excellency the President of the Republic of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, and signed by Dr. Edouard Nirene, the Prime Minister. Moving ahead with health matters, Rwanda is beginning to benefit from the substantial investment put in the health sector. Reports say that over 5,000 people from other countries come to Rwanda every year for medical treatment. We have details with William Evans. In the past 30 years, the Rwandan government has put deliberate efforts in building modern infrastructure and increasing the number of up-to-date medical equipment alongside intensive capacity building for several health workers. Uh, in the past 30 years, it was inevitable for many Rwandans to seek medical help from abroad because we lacked the number of them. CT scans and other modern equips started being available here around 2000 and were only four countrywide. As we speak, these are in most of the hospitals and health centers and in private hospitals. Director General Clinical and Public Health Services Governance at the Ministry of Health revealed that the health sector has continued to increase its diagnostic capacity, hence reducing the number of patients seeking medical care in other countries. We have been you know, increasing our diagnostic capacity in terms of uh, laboratory and imaging. We no longer sending uh, these samples. Everything is done locally. We are only still sending few cases abroad for medical, further medical treatment. We are currently uh, installing, we are preparing the ground where the pet city will be installed. We've already uh, contracted a supplier to know when uh, it's coming. We've entered into strategic acquisition uh, partnership with different companies uh, across the, that are leading in the diagnostic, uh, medical diagnostics. And um, we hope that by next year we we'll have this space city in Rwanda. During the groundbreaking ceremony of King Faisal Hospital expansion in July, reducing the number of Rwandan patients seeking medical treatment abroad and increasing the number of international patients seeking medical treatment in Rwanda was a point emphasized by President Paul Kagame. To keep sending patients, for example, outside. So you send people to go and train outside, they come back, but you keep sending patients outside to be treated outside. So it doesn't add up. We want, therefore, that to translate into growth of capacity here in our country in uh, as many fields as we can. And therefore, our people and others from the region being able to get the services they need from us, from here, things we build here. Currently, it takes about 25 minutes to reach the nearest health facility across the country, but officials say they are looking into how to reduce this time in addition to ensuring more improved health service quality. William Evans, Mutabazi, RTV News. 
Thank you, Evans, for the details now to economic matters. Economic analysts suggest that the Rwandan government should adopt new measures to tackle inflation, such as increasing strategic reserves for frequently fluctuating commodities. This recommendation comes after the National Bank of Rwanda projected a price rise of 5.8% in 2025, up from 4.6% in 2024. Prince Manzi tells us more. In Kigali city, at a marketplace commonly known as Mutanganas, buyers and sellers affirm that some commodities prices have risen. Some of the commodities with high prices are matoki and meat. A kilogram of meat is on 5,500 random francs. In these days, the price of meat has increased. We are retailing on a higher price and we sell on an even higher price. On the other hand, their citizens enjoy, as some of the commodities are on a lower price. Because when you look for Irish potatoes, the Chiniji big size is on 650 Rwanda francs, and the small size is on 600 Rwanda francs. Economic experts want the sharp inflation or deflation constrain the economy adversely affecting both citizens and businesses. The main reason for rising food prices in Rwanda is that agricultural production is sufficient for the domestic market as elaborated by Dr. Fidel Mutemberezi, a university lecturer. Dr. Mutemberezi recommends that strengthening trade partnerships with countries producing surplus crops will bridge the supply gap. <laughs> It is critical to strengthen trade partnerships within the region in order to ease the flow of goods and this will reduce the prices. In addition, Professor Ejid Karuranga, an economic expert, affirms that it is critical to establish strategic reserves to stabilize the prices of essential goods during shortages. And consider how the status is, there could also be need to stock for future purposes. There are various measures that could be put in place. The governor of Rwanda's central bank, John Gwangonga, elaborates that the central bank has continued to implement measures to curb inflation. There has been unusual seasons that led to the increase of prices on markets worldwide, resulting from the challenges we had in the last two years. There are commodities prices that reason and are not deducting any sooner, so we are working on how at least they cannot continue to increase. Despite the projected 5.8% rise in prices next year, reassures have been given that it falls within the acceptable inflation range of 2 to 8%. Thank you, Prince, for the details. Now to more news, a technology artist who uses his work to help young people learn about Rwanda's history and culture believes that art is a powerful tool for ensuring the younger generation grows up with a strong understanding of their country's heritage. His project titled The Legacy of Rwanda aims to achieve his goal through creative expression. And Nora Gladys with more. Welcome to the Kings of Rwanda Museum. Dear visitors, we are thrilled to have you here at the Kings of Rwanda Museum, where history and heritage come alive. Explore the remarkable... Lucas Gachide, who is 22 years old, is a first-year student at the University of Rwanda, studying in the Faculty of Science and Technology. He has a disability resulting from an accident he had when he was in high school. He says that after the accident, he went through severe depression, but eventually decided to find a solution within himself. I was depressed when I lost my finger, and then come up with uh, some idea about how can I make a 3D design, how I can make animation, how I can make a video game that can be a solution, not for fun, that, that can be for help other people. Because I have many projects, so this is one of my projects and I have other and the other one. So I come up with that, so, that solution of how can I make something bigger than than I think. 
Due to his expertise in creating advanced artworks using virtual reality, Lucas Gachide explains that the main reason he started making these artworks is to contribute to ensuring that young people grow up knowing the history of their country. I found the gaps in the traditional, uh, traditional education about the history of Rwanda. The many books are included, the, the some other history like First World War, European history. So I get the idea of how can I make the a books only mm -hmm. talk about the history of Rwanda in small chapters like First the, king, the Kings of Rwanda, the like traditional uh, tools or about about of Rwanda, yeah, genocide, rebellion, and the Rwanda today. So is I think is small chapters. In that books, anyway, any children can read when the books are designed well with the pictures. So it's kind of be interesting for any children. For foreigner or the diasporas, I make the virtual reality. Like it can be used there like in Rwanda today, where the some Rwandans but are outside the country. The, so, some of them, they don't know about the history of Rwanda. So my virtual reality can help them to know history, in, history of Rwanda like in certain minute only. Gachire Lucas emphasizes that people with disabilities, as well as the youth, should not allow others to discourage them. My contribution is this, for example, is this, the rigors of Rwanda application, so anyone and people want to know about the history of Rwanda in a small time, like 50 minutes, can read my book, can play, play as a video game on a computer, even in virtual reality. Despite the incapability they have, they can make a lot of things through what they are able to do. Gachide spends most of his time in the lab provided by the university where he works on various projects. He wakes up early in the morning and heads there to start his work, using various softwares such as Blender, Unreal Engine, ArchCAD, and 3D. He also continuously enhances his knowledge in areas that will contribute to the country's development. Enora Gladys, Ava TV News. Thank you, Enora. Now to health matters, gastroenterologists are urging the public to prioritize proper hygiene during food preparation to reduce the risk of Helicobacter pylori infection and this bacterium commonly linked to stomach ulcers is also a significant risk factor for developing stomach cancer. We have more in this. Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori is a bacterium that infects the stomach and is commonly transmitted through contaminated food. Its spread is often linked to poor hand hygiene and insufficient cleaning of food preparation utensils. Dr. Marie Solange Mukanunvie discusses its symptoms and emphasizes the importance of maintaining proper food hygiene. Akenshi iyo iyo mikorobi geze mu gifu umuntu ashobora kuyibana ntagira Most of the time when the H pylori bacterium enters the stomach, a person may live with it without showing symptoms. However, over time it can damage the stomach lining, leading to symptoms such as pain, loss of appetite, weight loss, and sometimes vomiting. It can also cause ulcers in the small intestine and inflammation in the stomach. One of the most severe symptoms is the development of ulcers that can result in vomiting blood. If left untreated, this infection can increase the risk of developing stomach cancer, a potentially life-threatening condition. It can reach a point where ulcers form in the stomach and if not treated, they grow and become cancer. If the cancer is not detected at an early stage and treated, it can take the person's life. Treating H. pylori alone is not sufficient. It is essential to undergo reliable follow-up tests to confirm that the infection has been completely eradicated. When we treat you, we prescribe medications that may take up to a month. After completing the treatment, you will spend an additional two weeks without taking any medications. Following this period, we conduct tests to check if the infection has been completely cleared. 
The most reliable test to confirm the eradication of H. pylori is a stool test. If the bacterium is still present in the stool, it indicates that the infection persists. Another test we perform is an endoscopy, where we examine the stomach and take a small tissue sample, known as a biopsy, to send to the laboratory for further analysis to ensure the bacterium has been eliminated. Many patients may report that H. pylori doesn't heal completely, but this often depends on the type of test performed. For example, a blood test that detects antibodies cannot definitely confirm whether the infection has been eradicated, as these antibodies remain in the bloodstream even if the bacterium is no longer present. Therefore, this test does not accurately determine if the infection has cleared from the body. Individuals responsible for preparing meals for large groups, such as chefs, kitchen staff and school caterers, are strongly urged to maintain strict hygiene standards to prevent the spread of H. pylori. Still on health matters, residents of Muchindo sector in Gisagara and healthcare workers at Chiwai Health Center report that the renovation and expansion of the facility have alleviated congestion and introduced previously unavailable services, making healthcare more accessible. The health center has expanded its offerings with the construction of new buildings and renovation of existing ones. Healthcare workers note that these improvements have enhanced service delivery leading to a significant increase in patient numbers, including the addition of dental services, which were previously unavailable. The renovation, which also includes the expansion of the health workforce and the addition of new equipment, will further streamline service provision and enhance this, the efficiency of care delivery. We are also pleased to have expanded our services across various domains with more rooms to accommodate patients. Now, critically ill patients can be received in private rooms, allowing us to treat them calmly and comfortably. For instance, we have dedicated spaces to care for pregnant women in labor, children experiencing seizures, and other critical cases, ensuring they receive the necessary monitoring and care. Additionally, we have received a new ambulance, which has been a great asset to us. Previously, it was challenging to transport critically ill patients due to our distance from the hospital. But now we can quickly transfer critically ill patients or pregnant women with complications directly to the hospital, with one of our health personnel accompanying them. This improvement has greatly enhanced our ability to provide timely care while ensuring the patient's health remains stable. The Chivai Health Center, which was established six years ago and recently renovated, now has the capacity to serve over 200 patients per day, an increase from 70. Its hospital's patient intake has also risen, now accommodating 40 patients compared, compared to 14 previously. You're still watching RTV News now to matters making headlines globally. Conservation experts in Kenya are helping communities in areas impacted by drought to develop climate resilient alternative livelihoods like beekeeping to help them cope with the changing weather patterns. We have more with VOA. In the scorching afternoon sun in Garsen on the Kenyan coast, Maurice Kadenge is harvesting honey at his beekeeping farm. Kadenge, a member of the traditionally farming Pokomo community in the Tana River Delta region, says he embraced beekeeping after perennial droughts and flooding affected his farming activities. The father of nine says the new venture has improved his circumstances. I feel like it has transformed my life in a big way. It gives me an income which helps in the upkeep of my family. My wife and children eat well, dress well, and the kids go to school. Kadenge is one of the beneficiaries of the Tana Delta Green Heart Initiative, a project aimed at helping communities affected by climate change develop livelihoods that also promote environmental conservation. An East African Environmental Society, Nature Kenya, is implementing the project in partnership with the Kenyan government and other organizations. Ernest Simeoni is the director of African Beekeepers, which developed the beekeeping initiative for the Delta area. We are directly involved in managing 
these beehives. The community, they, in, they, they, they uh, contribute to the land. They contribute some slight labor where there's some security. They have to part, take part in security, making sure that the beehives are not stolen or tampered. And it has so far given out over 50,000 beehives to individual farmers and various groups in the Delta area. We come in with um, the community don't have um, the, the financial muscle to buy these beehives. So we come in, support them with the beehives, support the capacity that they need. The UN Environment Programme says Kenya is one of the countries facing increasing effects of climate change, with communities living in arid and semi-arid areas being the most affected. Nature Kenya's Paul Matiku says beekeeping can be a game changer. One beehive is able to give a farmer over 6,000 shillings annually with only one harvest of honey. That is more than a farmer will get from an acre of maize in the drylands. Kadenga says he currently produces 500 kilograms of honey from his 60 beehives per harvesting season. And you can see the honey, clear honey. With Kenya being a net importer of honey, Experts say the arid and semi-arid areas like Tana River offer great potential for honey production that not only give the communities different livelihoods, but help conserve the environment. Juma, Majanga, VA News, Garsen, Kenya. Tomorrow news, a Guatemalan journalist, Kimi de Leon, wanted to amplify the voices of those affected by environmental issues and human rights abuses, so she helped found out a media outlet that focuses on marginalized communities. She now has received the Press Freedom Award VOA once more. Protecting Guatemala's diverse landscape and the indigenous communities who live and work there is an issue Kimi de Leon focuses on daily. To better amplify the voices of those communities, she helped co-found the media outlet Prensa Comunitaria, or Community Press. We wanted to know and report about what was happening with civil society and with affected communities, the arrival of extractive companies and the impact this was having on the daily life. In their coverage of human rights and environmental issues caused by mining and extraction, De Leon and her team report from their perspective of those affected, speaking with community leaders, women coalitions, students and indigenous groups. The aim, she says, is to report on issues no one else is covering. Community violence, political violence, evictions, or even what people are proposing as an alternative model of life, all of this is not in the media. And I also think that feminist journalism and the conversation about women's human rights were not in the digital field. That work has earned the Leon an International Press Freedom Award, presented by the Committee to Protect Journalists. For the Leon, the award is the result of more than 10 years of hard work by her and her team. It is something very nice and related to the importance of having the right to do journalism and to be recognized as such. But her accolades and accomplishments come with challenges and threats. Under the previous Guatemalan presidential administration, De Leon was harassed via social media and threatened with possible criminal charges. If you report about complex issues that have to do with extractivism, with drug trafficking, with corruption, with power groups, with sexual and reproductive rights, all these issues still pose a risk, especially if you are at the local or community level. Even though the Prensa Comunitaria team has had challenges, De Leon says they will still act as a voice to communities forgotten, excluded, or marginalized in Guatemala. Cristina Caicedo Smith, VOA News. And but before we leave, a reminder of our top stories. Rwanda is beginning to benefit from the substantial investment put in the health sector, and report says that over 5,000 people from other countries come to Rwanda for medical treatment every year. Economic analysts suggest that the Rwandan government should adopt new measures to tackle inflation, such as increasing strategic reserves for frequently fluctuating commodities. On the international scene, conservation experts in Kenya are helping communities 
in areas impacted by drought to develop climate resilient alternatives, livelihoods like beekeeping. And this marks the end of tonight's bulletin. On behalf of the technical and news production team, we sincerely thank you for being with us. Have an enjoyable weekend.